So again, just that one minute overview of what the Stanford MSX program is. It's a one year full-time in-person master's in science and management degree at Stanford Graduate School of Business. And during your year, you will have fundamental core business classes that are span business fundamentals, such as microeconomics and data and decisions. But then you also have the opportunity to customize your experience with electives, electives you can take at the GSB, but also from the other schools at Stanford University, such as the law school or the medical school. But I think what's really special is as an MSX student, you get the same access to faculty classes and electives as our MBA program. And you'll have the ability to participate in clubs and activities. And because this is a mid-career program, we oftentimes are we're an incredibly family friendly, friendly community where all of our families actually uh, will live on campus um, close to the business school. And if you're coming with a spouse or a significant other, there's also accommodations. And if you're coming by yourself, there's accommodations all on campus and all within a few minutes of the business school. Um, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be studying alongside an incredibly global cohort with an average of 13 years of work experience coming from over 30 countries and over 40 industries. So it's pretty remarkable who you'll be studying next to in these classes. But that's enough from me about the Stanford MSX program. Again, this was just a brief overview. If you wanna learn more or if you wanna learn more about the application, those are gonna be two topics we are not covering in tonight's webinar, um, but you can learn a lot more about that from the Stanford MSX information session webinars. So without further ado, um, we are joined here tonight by such a badass, kick-ass panel of um, amazing MSX alumni. So I would like all of them to please go ahead, turn on your cameras, uh, turn on your microphones, and introduce yourselves, please. Um, so would love to know um, where you're from and to get started. Just something fun about yourself. So let's get started with Eric, and then we'll go to Chaba and then Sunny. Eric, we can't hear you. So maybe we'll go to Chava first and then Sunny and then back to Eric. Hi, everyone. Uh, konnichiwa, siastok, buna, hola. <laughs> uh, re real pleasure to be here. So I'm Chaba, Chaba Sabo, originally from uh, Hungary, Budapest. Uh, so big shout out to Zoli. I currently live in uh, Menlo Park, uh, California. Prior to the program, I was uh, actually running an energy company in Poland and Romania. And uh, after the program, I worked for more than five years at the Stanford Research Institute, uh, so in technology. And currently, I'm managing uh, uh, the USCS team for a digital engineering company. I live in Menlo Park, and a fun thing about me is that every Saturday I bike with my former classmates and alumni here in uh, Silicon Valley and our touchy-feely facilitator. That's amazing, Chava. Excellent. Welcome. Thanks for telling us that. Sunny, up to you, please. Where you're from and something fun about yourself. Hi, everybody. So great to meet you. Uh, my name is Sunny Webb. I live in San Francisco. Um, before the program, I was in San Francisco, so didn't go very far, but knew it was the right, right program for me. Um, uh, prior to the GSB, I was a software engineer. I started off as a data scientist early in my career um, and then did a number of different functions uh, until I got to the GSB. My recent role before the GSB was leading R&D globally for Accenture out of Silicon Valley. Um, and something fun about me, um, let's see, I have a one-year-old daughter. She just turned one a couple months ago. So I guess that's pretty fun. She's a source of joy for me. <laughs> I think so. Eric, let, can we try uh, your microphone here? Okay, are things uh, working better now? Thumbs up. <laughs> Great. Okay, um, I'm probably one of the oldest folks here. Uh, I was already one of the oldest folks in my cohort when I started. Uh, I would definitely encourage you folks to go earlier in your career. It's an opportunity. It's a better opportunity to get ROI on your big investment. Um, but uh, let's see. Um, what am I supposed to answer, Daniel? Where are what you was from I doing and before? something fun yeah. about yourself? <laughs> yes. uh, I have alternated between Virginia and California several times. Um, I've moved back and forth at least three, four times. Uh, I'm now in Seattle, so I think I broke the cycle. Uh, but I lived in um, both uh, Santa Clara and San Mateo during my stay at Stanford. 
I lived off campus, so if anybody has any questions about that, I can address that. Um, I was mostly doing um, infrastructure, uh, data center infrastructure consulting before uh, going to Amazon or before going to Stanford. Sorry, um, mostly migrating customers from uh, on-premises uh, uh, data centers to hosted environments. So my move to Amazon uh, was kind of timely, but um, I did go into um, the wallet business after Stanford, and I had a very successful Kickstarter. I thought that was going to be my retirement ticket, but I came back to technology. Excellent. Well, I look forward to learning more about that, Eric. I would like to go to Jasmine and then Deepa. Hello. Hola a todos. This is Jasmine. I'm from, from Paraguay. So I went, I did the program in 2016, 2017 with, with Deepa. She, she's one of my closest friends and from, from Stanford. And before joining the program, I was working in the government. I'm an economist and lawyer, and I didn't know anything about technology, about innovation. And one year at Stanford changed everything for me. I came back to Paraguay. I opened the, the innovation agency from the government and three months ago, and I left the government to open the first VC in, in Paraguay to invest in Latin America. And um, one funny thing, well, the first time I went to the States, I was like 15 years old and I'm from Paraguay and a person asked me, where are you from? And I say, I'm from Paraguay. No, where are you from? From Paraguay. No, I know that you are from far away, but I want to know from where are you are. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's funny and also very embarrassing for Americans. So thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Deepa. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's uh, great to see everyone here. And hi, Jasmine. Um, I am based out of the Bay Area. I'm, I'm Deepa, I graduated uh, the same year as, as Jasmine did, 2017. Uh, still based out of the Bay Area after uh, the MSX program. Uh, prior to that, I um, lived in um, SoCal and spent a little bit of time on the East Coast. Um, post the MSX, I've been at Google in a program management leadership role. And uh, prior to the MSX program, I'd spent my entire career pretty much in consulting. Um, so Deloitte Consulting for 13 years, um, focused on technology transformation for enterprise clients. Um, so yeah, it was really cool to be um, you know, in Stanford for a year and have the opportunity to really think through um, that transition from you know, consulting to big tech, um, and uh, really appreciated just all the resources um, that Stanford offered, um, you know, when I was exploring that option. Um, yeah, excited to be here. Um, in terms of a fun fact, um, I enjoy, um, I, I mostly try to like, on the weekends, make the most of the California um, sun. So love being outside hiking. I'm also a classical um, singer. Um, so I got to explore that a little bit again, go back to my singing roots um, what, uh, while I was at, the, at, at GSB. So yeah, yeah, excited to be here and um, hope to chat more. Woo! Thank you, everyone. And please forgive if you do hear a dog barking. I have a puppy behind me who all of a sudden started barking. Um, so just so our audience knows, um, the format for the webinars, uh, these wonderful panelists, I have a few prepared questions um, for them. Uh, but then we want to turn it over to you. So using the Zoom Q&A function, feel free to jot your questions and we'll try to save at least the last 15, if not the last 20 minutes of this webinar to answer your questions. Um, so thank you everyone for giving us a brief overview of where you were in your careers before MSX and where you are now. I want to start off with first Chaba. You know, your career before the GSB and even since has centered on Eastern Europe and connecting to Silicon Valley. You know, so you were doing that before the program started. So what made you more successful after the program? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, I spent most of my career, four years in management consulting also. So big shout, shout out for the management consultants out there. And uh, four years in energy building an energy company. And uh, most of my life, I lived in Budapest, Hungary, work across the region. And uh, one, one time I came out to the Valley it was 2011. And that, that trip completely changed my mind. I was like, oh my God, like I really want to get into tech. This is what the future is. And uh, since then I, I tried to think about, okay, how, what is the best way for me to transition into the Bay Area, to the US, 
including immigration, including, uh, you know, having the right level of access. So I was, uh, I was, you know, number two in a hundred, we built a hundred twenty million dollar company he got listed in warsaw and in budapest uh, so so it was pretty doing well you know i didn't feel like starting from scratch so i did want to come in at a, at a higher level uh and the, the best option for me was to get into stanford which is not easy uh so it took me a little bit of time to figure out my strategy and prepare properly but i i the only school i applied to was stanford now the question was, do I want to get into the MBA program or the MSX program? And prior to coming to, to Stanford for an information session at that time face-to-face, -face, I didn't know about the MSX program. But the moment I learned about it, I was like, oh, this is it for me. I have an undergrad in economics. I have an, uh, a degree in finance. I did management consulting. I've been running businesses. I definitely want to spend, you know, as you know, just one year, not two years on, on getting back in the bench and uh, kind of explore, you know, take a step back and figure out how I can get into tech. And I got really lucky to be honest with you because one of my professors uh, through this one year program uh, reached out to me at one point and he's like, hey, you know, I really like you. Uh, did you ever think about working in tech? I'm like, yeah, that's the only thing I can think about. He's like, you know what? I, I'm the president of this uh, uh, research institute called the Stanford Research Institute. Maybe you would be interested in a job there. I'm like, I have no idea what those guys do. And then I looked into it. And of course, you know, they invented the internet and the computer mouse and Siri. And I was like, okay, if, if I really want to get into tech and I really want to learn about what technology is and what's coming down the pipe, what's going to happen in the next five to 10 years, this is the place to be. And I got, I got fortunate enough to, uh, to get a job offer and get in. Thank you for that, Chaba. You know, Eric, you were you were saying that you were a little bit on the uh, older side of your cohort, but I think what's really cool about your experience too is that we see a lot of engineers who want to come to the MSX program who are trying to ascend to higher level management positions. And so, once you left the program, how did you evaluate all of your options, and how do you find your program? How do you find your role now um, in comparison to where you were before? Yeah, um, I was convinced that uh, coming to Stanford that I wanted to either become a VC or uh, launch a startup uh, coming out of the program. So I had no intention of, of going back to tech. And uh, I was partially successful. I, I, I took a few engineering classes, actually. Um, and on a whim, I decided, hey, I'm going to take uh, ME. 318, I believe it was. Um, and I'm going to learn how to use a milling machine and um, cut some metal. Uh, totally, you know, non sequitur kind of elective. And uh, I figured maybe when I retire, I'll buy a milling machine and I'll have the skill to just play with the machine and make stuff that I want to make. Uh, but my class project was a, a metal wallet. And um, coming out of GSP, it, it empowers you to make some crazy life decisions. And so I created a wallet company uh, in the first year. I had two Kickstarters, raised uh, three quarters of a million dollars um, and created uh, you know, a small business. And uh, like I said, that was not at all what I intended to come out with, but uh, that's what I did. And after doing that for a few years, you know, I decided, hey, this, this is a fun hobby. Uh, it's, it's pocket money, but uh, I, need to, I need to get back into tech before I'm irrelevant. So um, having, having the degree from Stanford certainly made my, uh, interviewing easier. Um, in fact, I just hired an MBA 20, uh, and he's starting on my team, uh, next week. So, um, you, you were talking about building networks and, uh, you know, I, I never expected that an alumni network would be helpful like this. And, and now, you know, I, I was able to hire from that network. Um, I've interviewed over a hundred people here at Amazon. And his interview was unlike anything I'd ever seen, right? He, everybody had good things to say about him. Um, he was uh, um, a strong uh, hire kind of candidate. And um, most of the candidates I've interviewed did not have those kind of qualifications. So being able to draw from that uh, and hire qualified folks was a huge plus for me. 
Thanks for that. Eric and Chaba, I think what I was hearing in both of your stories is just this idea to be open to different possibilities. So Eric, you are open to taking this class randomly over at the engineering school, Chaba, you know, to talking to this professor and, and, and to, um, so that's pretty incredible that, you know, just being surrounded by those options kind of has led to post MSX journeys. I want to now turn to the ladies for a moment. So Deepa, I do have a particular question for you, um, but I want to keep this one open to, we'll start off with the three of you gentlemen, we're not excluded from this question. Um, but we know that it's a trade-off staying in the workforce versus taking one year to invest. And we alluded to this a bit in, in the introduction, but what did it that, what was it that you thought about and why was MSX the right choice for you? Yeah, so I think in terms of, um, you know, exploring like full time versus part time programs, I think um, the full time was just a no brainer in the sense that, um, you know, when I reflect back, I feel like even just the one year, I don't know where the time went. Um, and I feel like the 24 hours in a day just wasn't enough to um, sort of fit in and, you know, just soak up like everything that the program had to offer. So from that perspective, I think, you know, definitely full time is what I was going for. But at the same time, at that juncture in my career, I felt like two years was maybe a bit too much for me to feel like I could, you know, disconnect and like get, you know, away from the workforce and take that pause. So the MSX was just perfect in the sense of offering everything that the MBA program does, but being able to do that in a really like customized, compressed time frame. So, yeah, I would say that um, that um, was what really, you know, appealed and sort of stood out to me from from that perspective. Thanks, Deepa. Sunny, Jasmine. Chaba or Eric, do you want to add anything? Yes, and from from my point of view, and from my experience, before coming to 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 the program, I didn't know I come because of of leadership, and I wanted to know what is next in my career, and because I studied economics, and I didn't like to to do more economics, and I didn't to understand what is next in my career. So, and there I, I fall in love with innovation, with, with technology, not, not knowing no, nothing before. And so that, that was the most of, of my experience. And, and taking into account your question about the, the alumni network, now I just opened a, a, a venture capital firm here in Paraguay, it's the first VC in Paraguay. So me and, 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 my, and, and the other founder, the other partner, we are by ourselves. I mean, we don't have no one to, to ask or, 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 or a few people to ask here in, in Paraguay. So, so this network is the most important asset that I have in this moment of my life. And I didn't, I never realized that that is going to happen after five years. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'd love to add to that. I, I couldn't agree more. I, um, you know, when, when you asked me maybe what the question about what, what did it change? I, I would kind of question back what didn't it change? It really impacted every dimension and every factor of, of my life. Um, I kind of joke sometimes that I, I really haven't left the GSP because I'm hanging out with GSP people almost every weekend, <laughs> even though I graduated in 2018. Um, but, you know, before and, and after, I, I you know, I, I wanted to pursue entrepreneurship. That's what really drew me to Stanford. I think a lot of the panelists here are saying something a little similar. Um, I was already in tech, but I didn't, I had a pretty narrow perspective of what entrepreneurship could be. Um, and at the GSB, I learned a ton about that. I, every part of it, I, I dove into it and tried it out. Um, and it really broadened my perspective of what was possible. Uh, and perhaps even more importantly, it instilled uh, and promoted a view inside myself of, of what I'm capable of. So I tried taking a lot of risks and, and doing new things that I wouldn't have done had I stayed on the same trajectory. Yeah, just Thank adding you. on that, uh, uh, just a quick thought, like uh, I also feel like I never left the GSB maybe because I live one mile uh, from the GSB. But uh, you know, this Saturday I was biking with one of the professors from uh, from Stanford, and we bumped into this other professor, Carol Robin, whose book I'm actually just reading right now. It's on my desk, so I could have a conversation with her about it. And uh, that that access that network, you know, uh, 
to to whenever I I'm in trouble or, or thinking about something, there's always someone who is either an alumni or a professor I can reach out to and tap into, and and they can just give me the resources or the pointers or just get on a call and explain something that it would take me like weeks to learn. Uh, uh, it's just in, incredible. Thanks, team. Um, I, Eric brought up a really good point, and I'd like to open this to all of our panelists. This idea of ROI, and I want to maybe change ROI to not just financial return on investment, but maybe a tangible thing that you got from the program that has helped your career in technology. Can anyone speak to that? Yeah, we'll start with you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Daniel. Uh, did you call on You're someone first. else? Okay. No, so I, said, I said yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I can. Um, I'll take a stab at that because I feel like both um, in the year that I spent, like at the GSB plus, like beyond that, I feel like there was just so much I was able to take away in terms of, you know, applying that to like making the choices that I did and the and the decisions, um, you know, relative to like moving to um, a career in tech. So I would say on campus, um, definitely conversations that I was able to have with um, professors that came from leadership roles in tech, um, guest speakers that they brought on, the network that they really opened up, like super super generously in terms of, you know, being available, like providing their time and advice, that was super helpful. Um, and then uh, that same network, extending that to just even my like classmates. In fact, one of my classmates spouse was at Google, and she still is in a leadership role. And um, he was even like willing to make that connection when I was exploring a role here. So I will say that a lot of that brainstorming and being able to, um, you know, sort of get someone's input at very key junctures is something that um, was very um, critical for me in terms of like moving the needle and being able to, um, yeah, just being able to uh, make that transition. So that is something I really took away. And even now years like from the program, like four years, like after the GSB, I feel like that's something I still um, rely on a lot. Java. I, yeah, it's just, uh, just a quick- And then we'll go to the study. <laughs> so, you know, coming from Central Europe, like the, the first time I, I saw the price tag of the GSB program, I, I need to say I was shocked. I was like, wow, you know, that's a lot of money. Do I actually need to pay it at once or in increments or how does it work? Uh, and, you know, to, to be honest with you, I, I, I gave it a, a really hard thought. I'm like, okay, is this really worth the investment? And everybody was always telling me like, you know, retrospectively, uh, it's, it's a no brainer. And just to give you a fact, I, I more than tripled my salary, you know, in FTEP, just out of coming out of the, the GSB. And, and now it's it's more than more than several multiples of that. So on the financial side, definitely that was the ROI. On the personal side, to give you another example. My wife was just finishing up her PhD as I was finishing her, my program. And just by being on campus, she was able to network with professors and she got a postdoc. So she spent actually almost four years on campus. So I extended my one year to, to almost five years so I could hang out, you know, um, uh, and, and that that was just unbelievable. Like the, the level of impact it had on our family and on my wife's career was just uh, uh, uncomparable. And also on the, on the personal level, you know, coming from Central Europe, having an accent, having a strange name that nobody can pronounce here in the US, I, I felt very underconfident. I need to say that, you know, I, I felt that, uh, how, how am I going to contribute to to things? I did, I you know, I had a lot of knowledge, but somehow the brand, somehow being part of this network and having these constant interactions with people, kind of gave me the confidence to kind of um, lead uh, and and make changes. And you know, I haven't have a strong opinion about things when when strong opinions had to be stated. And of course, uh, have vo the vulnerability and admit when I was badly wrong <laughs> and then change course. And I owe this all, all to Stanford. Anything from the language to the thinking, the frameworks, it all, all came through this, this incredible one year. Thanks, Java. Sunny, and then I'd like to go on to the next question here. Yeah, um, so I graduated in 2018. Since then, I've uh, changed organizations, functions, and, and jumped multiple levels. For me, the tangible thing was uh, fundraising. One of my first investors was someone I met while I was studying at the GSB. Um, in one of my classes at the GSB, I got to 
pitch an idea to Eric Schmidt and he did not invest, but he gave me a lot of really great feedback. And um, once you've had the chance to pitch to someone like him, uh, it makes it a lot easier when you're going down the run, <laughs> down, down the line. So um, uh, I'm running a search fund right now. I'm looking for a healthcare technology company. And the goal is that I'll uh, work with my investors to acquire and then be the CEO and run the operations day to day. So I had to find a, a big team of, uh, of people to, to back me to do that. And I started by the people that I met at the GSB. Thank you for that. All of your stories here. Here's my last question. And then I want to turn to questions from the audience here. So this one, I'm actually going to pick on uh, Jasmine and Chaba. So as two international students, you know, I've heard from talking with students and with alumni from our program that one of the biggest things you need to do if you want to get into tech, especially in Silicon Valley, or just learn a little bit more of technology, is to learn how to speak the language of Silicon Valley or learn to speak the language of tech. Can you, both of you, share with me uh, and with our audience, you know, what was that like and what does that actually mean? Why is that important um, to your credibility? The language of Silicon Valley, the language of Stanford is being yourself. It's being your really what you are in, in reality. And I remember one of the questions of the application was, what mattered most to you and why? And I, and I wanted, at the beginning, I wanted to put my profession and my professional life. And I was reading and reading. And, and Jasmine, this is not true. Your family is the most important thing for you. So I changed it and I put it my family. And, and, and so that, that language is being yourself. And, 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 and that's what I learned over there. And, and being authentic and being yourself. And, and, and as, 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 as Saba, Kaba, Saba, <laughs> say at the beginning, and, and just trying to, to, to interact and, and, and be yourself and, and, and depend, in, independently the, from where you are, you have a, a, to add a value in the company that you're working in, in the group, in the network, and everywhere. Yeah, just, just building on what Jasmine said, you know, uh, it is, it is uh, very important to be authentic and be uh, who you are. But it is also important to, to, you know, kind of get up to speed on, on different terms. People can, you know, start using technology terms around you, acronyms. I, for example, I, I kind of heard about VC before coming to Silicon Valley, uh, but I never saw one. <laughs> so, so it, you know, just, just seeing these people interacting with them, pitching to them, getting feedback uh, was, uh, was extremely useful. And uh, also just, just learning about how to, uh, you know, like when, when people talk to you about uh, technology or they talk to you about uh, building companies, um, growing companies uh, at a global scale, uh, you, you kind of, um, um, you learn about a different perspective. It's, it, and I, I usually like to call these like uh, glasses, you know, it's kind of like a glass that, that you can take off and you can put on another glass and see a completely different picture of another, another angle of the, of the picture or edge which you weren't able to, to see unless you are exposed to these people and you actually uh, have the bandwidth and the time and that, uh, you know, one year to kind of hang out with them. I remember, you know, coming down to, uh, to the pavilion that you see behind Jasmine and uh, there was Steve Ballmer having breakfast. And uh, I called up my classmate who used to work for him and, uh, and you know, sure enough, he, he passed by. So we both, you know, he's like, hey, let's have breakfast together. So I had breakfast with Steve Ballmer and, we shared an amazing discussion. So, um, so just and learning about his perspective as a professor, as a owner of a sports club, as a person who built a, a multi-billion-dollar company. Thank you for that. All right, team. I'm going to transition now to some of our audience Q and A here. Um, so, uh, I think this should be a very short question uh, or, or a short answer, but. Um, perhaps maybe you may have had experience with this, but did any of you have an internship during the MSX program? I can speak from the programmatic side, um, but did, if anyone had an internship, you know, at Google um, during the program, um, were you aware of this? Otherwise I'll speak from the program side. No, no, okay. No. 
I, I didn't do an internship, but uh, some of the class projects were like kind of an internship. So I did work with different companies and VCs and just do a quick due diligence or a market analysis. So it was kind of uh, intertwined with the, uh, with the, the with the class projects. And in addition to what Chavo was saying, we also had uh, we also offer an independent study project that you can do um, called a 390 with a faculty member um, that allows you to conduct your own research um, and, and focus on different companies. So that's one option. It's very difficult um, to have an internship because the program is full time and it is a lot juggling, you know, the career navigation, the academics um, and the social activities. Um, so it's not recommended. Um, and the earliest that if that's a priority for you, um, the earliest you can take an internship is actually your last semester or your last quarter, excuse me. And that's usually where you're doing your most intense networking to try to find a job. Eric, did you want to add something? Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, uh, you sound a bit faded, Eric. Can you uh, speak up? Okay. I, I wouldn't recommend taking an internship. Um, you know, you're you're paying uh, dear money for the education. Take advantage of the campus resources as much as you can, um, and you know, take the classes that you would never have an opportunity to take again. Um, you know, immerse yourself on the the resources that come from campus, um, and yes, definitely, you know, take that last couple quarters to start your job search, uh, but. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend doing an internship. Great, thank you panelists. Um, Eric, I wanna start you off with this question, but then again, uh, the rest of you also mentioned earlier. Um, do employers see or weigh differently an MBA versus an MSX degree on a resume? And how have you all navigated that in your career pursuits? Uh, it didn't matter for me interviewing here, you know, they, recognized that I had a master's degree from Stanford and that was enough to, you know, make it a lot easier for me to interview. It's not going to win you the job, right? But it's, it's definitely going to uh, open doors. Um, it's, uh, it, it's just a check mark, right? Um, do you have a master's degree one? And from, is it from a school that I recognize? And does it happen to be the number one business school? Sure. You know, I'll, I'll talk to you. So uh, I think um, I think it's very valuable just having the credential. It's it's just proof that you've done the work. You're able to test. Um, you're able to uh, perform at a high bar. I see the other panelists nodding their heads. If you don't have anything else to add, the next question we have here is: Can you tell us what your memor most memorable course or program that you took related to, to technology? What was that and why did you decide to take that? I, I can quickly yeah. answer that. So I, uh, so one of the advantages of being in the GSB is that you can take courses from any school. So I, I took acting course, I took legal course. And one of the course that uh, uh, I did was MSNE 273. That's an engineering school and it's about launching technology ventures. And uh, we, we teamed up, it was three engineers and myself and um, we, we tried to launch a, a technology startup. We pitched to a bunch of VCs. We got some promising, you know, feedback. Uh, so so it, it was all great. Now, where did I use that? Uh, we didn't end up launching the company. Uh, it was, uh, there were a lot of other critical factors in there, but uh, I, I, start, I started working at this research institute right after school. And guess what? We had to commercialize technologies. And so suddenly I, I was sitting at this table to weigh in on how you, uh, you know, commercialize deep technologies. And I actually leveraged a lot of the process and a lot of the thinking that happened uh, through that class. Awesome. Anyone else want to add? Deepa. Yeah, I'll go ahead and add as well that uh, my favorite class, actually any class of Rob Siegel's I love, but especially Industrialist Dilemma, um, where he, um, you know, spent um, uh, that entire quarter and like number of case studies sort of comparing incumbents and disruptors. And it just gave me this like whole new framework to analyze um, and view like tech strategy and just look at companies um, in terms of, you know, their trends, their growth. It's um, really one of um, I would say uh, my most, um, you know, memorable, like favorite courses. Um, and I believe 
Rob just came up with a with a book as well that I'm uh, looking forward to to reading. So yeah, definitely um, a ton of um, tech and tech strategy courses to choose from uh, in 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 general across the board is what I would say about the program. Yep. Yeah, his book is uh, just came out a couple of weeks ago. The Brains and Bronze Company. <laughs> Sunny, what would you like to add? And then I'll go into the next question. Yeah, Rob Siegel's classes are great. He's fantastic. If you can get in, there's always a, a long waiting list, but um, he's great. <laughs> um, I, I would add, uh, I took um, a, an angel and VC class and that really opened up my eyes in terms of how fundraising goes in tech and the, the tech community and entrepreneurship. Uh, I learned a ton and in the, in the class project, we had to kind of build a business, build a pitch and then come in and pitch it to uh, a real team of angel investors and, and VCs that came into the class. And so we got a lot of great feedback. It was a great experience. We had great teamwork. Um, I, I learned a ton from it. It really changed what I ended up doing next after the GSB. Thanks, Dean. We've had a couple of questions um, surrounding the career services and, um, you know, questions surrounding how effective was the Career Center to help you transition from either non-tech to tech jobs, um, campus recruiting. Um, what kind of support are you getting from the Career Management Center to land your dream opportunity? Eric, do you wanna start us off? Sure, um, I will say that it is what you make of it. Um, it's, it's a less curated experience than what the MBAs go through. Uh, I don't know if it's changed since I was there, but uh, you know the MBAs are are walked through the process, and the the MSXers, you know, you, you've got way more experience typically than the MBA students, and so your career journey often doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go to on-campus recruiting because, you know, they're they're looking for yeah rock stars that just finished their MBA with very little experience. Um, so for an MSX students, that may not be the best venue for you to find your next job. Uh, you're certainly welcome to attend all those events, or at least I was. Um, uh, I, I don't know how many of those events I went to if for nothing else, the free food. Um, but uh, I, think, I think your career search journey needs to be your own. And, and that's probably why um, most MSX job searches take longer than your typical M uh, MBA student because we're not going into, you know, I don't want to say entry level jobs because that's not what the MBAs are, are taking either. But um, typically MSXers are going into run new companies, going to senior management, um, starting a startup or being, being a principal at a startup. So uh, th these journeys are more developmental rather than jumping into a job. So I, I, I know that doesn't directly answer the question, but uh, the, the, the key is, is that this, it, it is what you make of it for one, and, and it is your journey to, to plan and to follow, not, not stepping into the standard practices of the Career Center. So just, just bidding on uh, that very quickly. Uh, so I met the Career Center day one. They, literally they came, back, came in uh, at the orientation and they said that, no, we're here to help you get a job. And I'm like, great, because I need a job after the program. Program is 11 months and I need a company to sponsor my visa so I can stay here. Uh, so, um, so I became one of the best friends with Veronica who worked at the career center. I think she's still there. And, uh, you know, I was like, this is amazing. You know, there's someone who's actually going to help me through this. And one of the first things we did, we, we kind of uh, mapped out which phase am I in and what do I want? And I, I learned this framework that, you know, uh, do you want to change your geography? I was coming from Central Europe. I had to be in the US, so yes. Do you want to change your industry? I was working in energy uh, for four years and management consulting. I wanted to get into tech, so the answer is yes. Do you want to change your job profile, right? It's usually very difficult to change one of them, not, not at least three. So they said, look, don't change your job profile. What is the strongest thing on your CV? And the strongest thing in my CV, it was, Sales. I, I'm really good in business development. I can sell consulting projects for, you know, uh, management consultants to power plants to research to whatever you need. So I was like, look, you know what? I'm I'm going to focus on sales. I was running companies. I was doing a lot of other stuff, but by focusing on that, helping me kind of rewrite the story from this U.S. perspective, this technology narrative, I was able to land a job. So uh, actually, I was able to land several offers. 
uh, and I actually chose to, to go for the research institute. Uh, so I, I would I would highly recommend, you know, I'm not telling you with day one, but you know, first we just walk in, uh, use uh, use their time. Uh, they they are there, they are super helpful, they have an amazing network. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you both for that perspective. Really appreciate it. So we're here just kind of in our final uh, final thoughts here. Um, so maybe we could do just a rapid fire, uh, kind of yes, no type of answers here. Did anyone take a class in renewable energy or, and sustainability? Yes or no? I, I did. What'd you think of it? 10 I words or less. It, it was a GSB class. I loved it. They were VCs. They were entrepreneurs. The founder of Solar City came in. Uh, one of the co-founders of Tesla was there. Uh, it was amazing. Great. Thank you, Chaba. Um, someone want to take, how does the MSX program impact startup entrepreneurs launching their new venture versus mid-career professionals uh, trying to do corporate advancement? Uh, yeah, I can take that one. Uh, I, I was in a corporation. I was in Accenture. I went to the GSB and then have pivoted into entrepreneurship. So I started a search fund, successfully raised uh, funding and have uh, been doing that for a few years. It gave me a perspective, going to the GSB gave me a perspective of what was possible. I thought entrepreneurship meant either you join a startup or you start something. And those were the only options. I learned about the search fund and I hadn't heard about it until I went to the GSB. So uh, it gave me uh, a whole new path. I think if you're interested in this as well, you're going to, you can take classes on fundraising. You can take classes on how to put your pitch together. You can take classes on how to build your product. Like the, the, I think there's like over 400 classes that have the word entrepreneurship in them, something ridiculous like that at Stanford. So you can really dig in as deep and as far and as broad as you want to go. Excellent. All right, final thoughts, anyone? Just last minute things that you want to share? Yeah, I want to share something. I did the opposite yes. and I don't recommend this to do. So before going to the to the GSB to Stanford, I commit myself to come back to my former job. And I say, okay, after two months I finish, I will go back. And I have to do that because I have the obligation. So don't do that. Go free uh, with, with freedom in, in terms of everything and be ready to change your life, be ready to, to, to dream for the first time in your life. And, and you will find your path in, in that one year, I'm sure. I think my final thought would be, if you go, make it your year of yes, try new things, take a class that you only find mildly interesting and just explore it. Go on the study trip, You know, go have lunch with MBAs. Don't put yourself in a box, really stretch yourself in every direction that you can and, and make the most of it because this is one year that really is going to feel like 15 years, but you'll look back and it'll go so fast and you'll you'll really enjoy it. Totally agree with Sunny. Make it a year of yes. Uh, talk to people, make friends with people you wouldn't normally talk to. Um, spend time with MBAs, go on a study trip. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I went to New Zealand uh, with the MBAs and that was fantastic. Um, not only the trip, but uh, getting to know, you know, you're spending a, a week with with folks in close quarters, you get to know them very well in a short amount of time. Um, take classes in the engineering school. Um, just in, enjoy everything there is to enjoy in Palo Alto. So. So one, one last thought, like if you're still deciding on the program and uh, uh, whether to, to go um, into the MSX or not, I would highly recommend to visit the campus you're gonna live there on campus for a year. Just you know, make sure to walk around, get to know a little bit the campus, and also uh, you have the opportunity to uh, sit in on a class. You can, you know, um, you can make that work if you uh, if you do it in advance, you plan it in advance, and that really gave me a big push to go go for the program because uh, that's that's pretty much one of the main experiences you're paying for. So just you know, sitting in a class, uh, hopefully Rob Seegers <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, yeah, hope to see you on one of these alumni reunions. Yeah, that's one to what um, everyone said. And I would say that, um, yeah, if you decide to go, just make the program your own. Um, I feel like there's just so much that 
the program offers that, um, you know, there's just no rules, there's no limits or boundaries. So you can totally customize and, you know, pick and choose the things that like resonate with you and, and call out to you. So yeah, I would say just, you know, make it your own and, and make the most of it. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I would say. Well, I want to thank you all, my wonderfully esteemed panelists, for joining us. This was such a wonderful conversation, and I really appreciated all of the various perspectives. So I want to give you back your evenings, your days, 